Uh, welcome back to the lectures on existence and uniqueness of uh, solutions of initial value problems. Uh, we have uh, discussed about the Lipschitz continuity of a function of two variables and also we proved in the last lecture uh, the Grunewald's lemma which will be used uh, in proving the uniqueness of solution of an initial value problem. Let us uh, recall the Grunewald's inequality uh, which uh, we did yesterday. Uh, the Grunewald's inequality recall Grunewald's inequality or, or Grunewald's lemma. So, let f x and g x be to real valued function so be to real valued function defined on some interval a b such that both f x and g x are non negative on the interval a b. Then the inequality, then the inequality f x is less than or equal to c plus integral a to x f t g t d t. Uh, with a constant k, k times where c and k are positive constants implies then this inequality implies f x is less than or equal to c times e to the power integral a to x k g t d t for x in the interval a b. So, this um, inequality says if whenever we have an inequality f x is less than equal to c plus integral a to b k times f t g t that implies that f x is less than equal to c times this constant c times exponential of the integral a to x get into g t d t. The advantage of uh, this inequality is that in the first inequality f x is coming on both sides and the second inequality gives a bound for the function f uh, the right hand side is independent of f. And a special case of this uh, Grunewald's inequality we will use uh, in proving the uniqueness theorem. So, that I state as a corollary, uh, a corollary let f x be a real valued
and non-negative function negative continuous function continuous function defined on a b uh, in the ground wars inequality also we require f x and g x be to real valued uh, continuous function there are also continuity is uh, required for giving an giving a meaning to the integral. So, uh, here in the corollary let f x be a real valued and a non negative continuous function defined on a b and k b a constant constant then then the inequality then the inequality f x is less than or equal to integral a to a to x k times so k times f t d t implies f x is equal to 0 on the interval a to b. So, this is a special case of Grunewald's inequality where uh, the constant c is 0 where the constant c is 0 and uh, g t or g x is 1, but c we assume to be a strictly positive as to, uh, is a strictly greater than 0, but that can be tackled ok. Let us see a proof of it. Proof of corollary let epsilon greater than 0 be a given number let epsilon be an arbitrary number given. Now, consider the inequality consider the inequality. f x is less than or equal to epsilon plus integral a to x k times f t d t integral a to x k times f t d t. Now, f x is a continuous non negative function and k is, is already given k is a positive constant strictly positive constant and epsilon is strictly positive. Now, by applying Gronewald's inequality on this so by applying Gronewald's lemma with so, remember Gronewald's lemma is f x is whenever f x is less than or equal to c plus integral a to x k into f t 
g t d t we have the inequality f x is less than equal to c times exponential of the integral a to x k into g t d t. So, if you apply this uh, ground walls inequality here with g x is equal to 1 and c is epsilon which is of course greater than 0. Then we get then we get f of x is less than or equal to c times c is epsilon times e to the power integral k times integral a to x k times g is 1. So, this is k into d t which is uh, equal to epsilon e to the power if you integrate x minus k times x minus a. So, therefore, uh, this implies that this function non negative function f x is less than or equal to epsilon times e to the power k and uh, x varies from a to b. So, the upper bound is b minus a. So, e to the power b minus a is a uh, finite quantity and this is true for all epsilon any given epsilon. So, since epsilon is arbitrary and f x is greater than or equal to 0, we have f x is identically 0. So, this quantity is a finite quantity and this is true for all epsilon and f is non negative. So, implies that f x is equal to literally 0. So, this uh, this form of uh, Gronewald's lemma we will apply in the uniqueness result. Okay, let us consider the uh, come to the uniqueness result. So, consider the initial value problem. So, dy by dx is equal to f of x comma y with uh, the given initial condition y at x 0 is y 0. So, this is the initial value problem and we will prove that if f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to x, then the solution of this initial value problem is unique. So, by making use of the Lipschitz type Lipschitz continuity condition, we will prove that the uniqueness of result and also we will invoke uh, the Gronewald's lemma. So, tools So, Lipschitz condition Lipschitz continuity of f with respect to y and Gronewald's lemma. So, we will also invoke a basic lemma for the initial value problem a basic lemma for the initial value problem. Okay, let me state and uh, prove a basic lemma for the initial value problem. If y x 
is a solution if y x is a solution of the initial value problem d y by d x is equal to f of x y and y at x 0 is y 0. Then y satisfies then y satisfies the following Volterra integral equation Volterra integral equation. It's given by y of x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y of t dt. So, this is the integral equation line. We denote this by i e and the initial value problem is i v p. So, the basic lemma is if a y is a solution of the initial value problem, then y satisfies the Volterra integral equation y x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y t d t and conversely, conversely if y is a solution of the integral equation i e and y belongs to the class of all continuously differentiable function defined on some interval x 0 x 1 with uh, x 1 is some number greater than x 0. So, it is a solution of the integral equation which is continuously differentiable on the interval x 0 x 1. Then y satisfies the initial value problem it means y is also a solution of the initial value problem. So, one way we are converting the different the problem of uh, solution of the differential equation into the problem of the solution of an integral equation. And uh, this integral equation i e the solution of the integral equation can be treated separately the solution of an integral equation need not be differentiable. In case it is differentiable we can show that it is a solution of the initial value problem. So, the proof of this basic lemma proof So, what we have is the differential equation d y by d x is equal to f of x y. Now, integrating integrating with respect to x over an interval x 0 to x we get. So, integral x 0 to x d y d x d x is equal to integral x 0 to x f of we change the variable to t and y is also a function of x y of t dt. 
and this is y at x minus y at x0 is equal to integral x0 to x f of t y t dt. And we know that the initial condition y at x0 is y0. So, therefore, and uh, pushing this to the right hand side y of x is equal to y0 plus integral x0 to x f of t y of t dt. So, this is a integ integral equation, Volter integral equation. So, therefore, if y is a solution to the initial value problem, then y is all, well, then y satisfies the integral equation. Now, we will prove the other way. Suppose that y is a solution to this uh, integral equation or y satisfies this integral equation and y is also continuously differentiable, then we can, uh, so suppose y is in c 1 x 0 x x 1 and uh, y satisfies i e then differentiating with respect to x differentiating with respect to x we obtain So, d y by d x is equal to derivative of y 0 is 0 plus now d by d x of integral x 0 to x f of t y of t d t using the Leibniz rule for uh, differentiating an integral. So, we get this turns out to be f of x y of x. So, the derivative of this integral is okay, derivative of this integral is f of x y of x. So, therefore, we get d y by d x is equal to f of x y of x. So, so, therefore, the function satisfies the differential equation and it is very uh, easy to verify that y at x 0 for the integral equation. See, in this integral equation, if you look at the integral equation and if you substitute, if you replace x by x 0, Okay, if you replace x by x 0, then this is integral x 0 to x 0 that okay, that is vanishes and y at x 0 is y 0. So, obviously, y at x 0 is y 0. So, this implies that y satisfies the initial value problem. Now, as I pointed out a remark, so one can study solution solutions of the integral equation without differentiability assumption without differentiability assumptions on y, but only with 
only with continuity assumption. Continuity assumption on y. So, such solutions, such uh, solutions are known as mild solution. mild solutions or weak solutions. of the initial value problem. So, if we do not require the differentiability condition on y, then uh, uh, the solutions of the integral equation, Volta integral equation just defined are known as a mild solutions or weak solutions. Now, we are ready to prove the uniqueness result. So, theorem. We now state and prove the uniqueness theorem for the initial value problem. Suppose that f of x y is continuous f of x y is continuous and lift is continuous with respect to y on a rectangle r which is in r 2 where r is defined as r is a rectangle set of all x y such that x minus x 0 is less than equal to a, y minus y 0 is less than equal to b for some constants a and b positive. So, we assume that suppose that f is a continuous and Lipschitz continuous with respect to y on a rectangle r and the rectangle is defined this way with Lipschitz constant with the Lipschitz constant alpha. Then the initial value problem dy by dx is equal to f of x y y at x 0 is y 0. Then the initial value problem when we say then the solution then the solution of the initial of the initial value problem is unique. If it has solution, then the solution is unique. But because of uh, the continuity, uh, with, okay, continuity is assumed with respect to both x and y. Because of the continuity, there exists a solution. 
and uh, here uh, our major uh, emphasis is on the uniqueness and uh, since f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y, we are going to prove that the solution is going to be unique. So, if solution exists then the solution is unique, it cannot have more than one solution if uh, f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y. Okay, we will prove it, the proof proof uh, we invoke the Grunewald's uh, lemma. So, let us assume that it has got two solutions, let y of x and z of x be two solutions. Let y and z be two solutions of the initial value problem. Defined on some interval x0, x1. So, thus by the basic lemma, by the basic lemma. basic lemma says any solution that is satisfying the initial value problem will also satisfy the integral equation. So, basic lemma says a solution satisfying the initial value problem, a solution satisfying the initial value problem will also satisfy the integral equation. So, therefore, we are using uh, the basic lemma. So, thus by the basic lemma y x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t y of t dt and similarly z is a solution. So, z x is equal to y 0 plus integral x 0 to x f of t z t d t is also a solution. Now, subtracting one from the other one. So, subtracting we get y x minus z x is equal to y y 0 and y 0 get cancelled and uh, the the integration domain of integration is common. So, integral x 0 to x f of t y t minus f of t z t d t. Now, if you take uh, the absolute value y of x minus z of x is less than or equal to integral x 0 to x absolute value f of t y t minus f of t is a t d t. Now, uh, we have assumed that f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument y. So, f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument. So, therefore, we can use a Lipschitz condition or Lipschitz continuity. So, this is less than or equal to. So, by Lipschitz continuous. Alpha times integral x 0 to x y of t minus z of t d t. Okay, this is by the Lipschitz continuity by Lipschitz continuity. 
of f. So, now we have an inequality that absolute value of y x minus z x is less than or equal to alpha times integral x 0 to x absolute value of uh, y t minus is a t d t. So, now if we use the corollary of Gronwald's lemma see the corollary of Gronwald's lemma if you have a situation like this if uh, f x is less than or equal to integral a to x. So, if f is less than or equal to integral a to x k f t d t then f x has to be 0 here the conditions on f is f is non negative continuous and k is a positive constant. So, if this uh, the conclusion is f t is equal to 0. So, if uh, we come to uh, our inequality. So, now by using Gronwald's. So, we have we obtained that absolute value of y of x minus z of x is less than or equal to integral x 0 to x alpha times y of t minus z of t dt. So, applying Gronwald's inequality lemma with so Gronwald's lemma uh, we use a corollary with f of x is absolute value of y of x minus z of x and k is equal to alpha and t x the corollary is 1 and c is 0. So, we get f of x is literally 0. So, that is y x minus z x is equal to 0 for x in the interval x 0 to x 1. So, the conclusion is so this implies that. So, we started with two solutions y, y and z and we have come to a conclusion that the difference between these two solutions for all x is 0. So, that is y of x is equal to z of x proving the uniqueness of solution. So, the solution is unique. Now, we will consider a few examples. Now, we will consider a few examples So, example call it example 1 d over d x is equal to y plus exponential 2 x with initial condition y at 0 is 2. So, look at uh, this uh, simple initial value problem. See note that it is a linear differential equation it is a linear differential equation and non homogeneous
So linear and non-homogeneous differential equation and uh, this equation is first order. So, sufficient uh, theory has been already been developed and uh, you have seen how to solve this equation by using the method using the integrating factor techniques and all. So, let us uh, analyze the solution existence of solution uniqueness of solution. Okay, here the function f of x y the right hand side is uh, of this equation is y plus e to the power 2 x and this is continuous So, with respect to x and y, it is a linear in y and it is an exponential function in x is a continuous a continuous function in the all uh, R2. So, f is continuous. And what about the Lipschitz continuity? So, f of x y 1 minus f of x y 2 which is equal to y 1 minus y 2. So, it is linear. So, therefore, it is obviously Lipschitz continu continuous. Okay, it is Lipschitz continuous. Here the Lipschitz constant alpha is 1. So, it satisfies all the conditions of the uniqueness theorem. So, the function is continuous in x and y and the function is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y with the Lipschitz constant 1. So, therefore, by the uniqueness theorem, so by the uniqueness theorem okay, the IVP this initial value problem. has a unique solution. This linear problem has a unique solution. Remember that not all linear problems, linear initial value problems are having unique solutions. We have seen examples and further we will see examples. And uh, by using the integrating factor and the method which you have already seen, we have seen that a solution of this equation is given by y of x is equal to e to the power x by applying the initial conditions e to the power x plus e to the power 2 x is the only solution. This solution is found by using the method we studied earlier and uh, by the uniqueness theorem this is only solution. And now let us consider another example. So, example 2, so let us consider a nonlinear initial value problem. So, consider a nonlinear initial value problem given by d y by d x is equal to x into sin y, where this uh, function is defined on for x on a domain, domain is defined by set of all x y, where x is bounded by 2 and y is free. So, y is varying from minus infinity plus infinity and uh, x is bounded by 2. So, let the initial condition be y at 0 is 1. 
we will analyze the existence and uh, uniqueness. So, first uh, uh, let us write down the function, the right hand side function f of uh, x y is x into sin y is continuous on d and uh, you will check whether this function is Lipschitz continuous with respect to the second argument y. To check the Lipschitz continuity of, of f with respect to y, we have uh, stated and proved a sufficient condition if the partial derivative of f with respect to y is uh, bounded in the given domain, then the function is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y in that domain. So, the partial derivative, so del f by del y is equal to x cos y and if we take the bound, say you take uh, supremum of this one for all x y in d. So, this is even maximum is enough, so ma maximum is attained. So, x y in d. So, this uh, is equal to cos y is bounded by 1 and uh, x is bounded by 2, so the supremum is 2. So, therefore, this implies that x sin y is Lipschitz, is Lipschitz continuous on d uh, with respect to y with uh, Lipschitz constant with the Lipschitz constant alpha is equal to 2. So, therefore, this function satisfies all the conditions of the uniqueness result. So, f satisfies conditions of uniqueness theorem. So, this therefore, the conclusion is so d y by d x is equal to x sin y with y at 0 is 1 has a unique solution, a unique solution starting from the given point of 0 1. But the existence uh, part as I have already mentioned if uh, the function is continuous with respect to x and y then uh, existence is guaranteed in some interval starting from the given initial point 0 1. And uh, now what we have uh, proved or observed is the uniqueness is guaranteed because of the Lipschitz continuity property of f with respect to y. Now, we will uh, uh, see an example where uh, we have more than one solution. Uh, that example we had already seen a linear equation. So, take an example. So, example 3. So, consider the initial value problem, of course, uh, this is a linear one d over d x 
is equal to 2 by x into y and the initial condition y at 0 is 0. So, in our earlier uh, sessions we have obtained its uh, general solution and also its uh, solution satisfying uh, the initial condition. So, uh, note that y is equal to c into x square is a solution for the initial value problem for every value of c. So, therefore, it has got we have seen that it has got infinitely many solution. Let us uh, just check why uh, or how we compare this with uh, the uniqueness result. So, in this case f of x y is 2 by x to y on an interval say 0 to some number say 0 to 2. 0 is a point given and uh, del f y del y obviously it exists is a 2 by x. But if we take the supremum of del f y del y when x and y or here depends only on x when x is in the interval say 0 1 which is sup so this does not exist we know that this blows up so Therefore, the function f is not Lipschitz continuous. With respect to y, see at x is equal to zero. You see the singularity is there for this differential equation. As x goes to zero, two upon x blows up. So, if it is not Lipschitz continuous with respect to y, so therefore, there is no surprise why this equation does not have a unique solution. So, the uniqueness theorem does not apply here. So, uniqueness theorem does not apply here. And uh, we have several other examples which we dealt with. One example which can be done as an exercise. Uh, so, example 4. So, consider the initial value problem d over dx is equal to 3 y to the power 2 by 3, the initial condition y at 0 is 0. We have uh, seen in the earlier lecture that this equation, this differential equation has got infinitely many solutions uh, including y x is equal to x cube. So, it has got many solutions. And in this case also, if we look at the function f of x y is equal to 3 y 2 by 3. So, it is a continuous with respect to both the arguments, but it is not Lipschitz, it is not Lipschitz with respect to y. 
on any domain containing the point 0 0. So, not Lipschitz on any domain containing 0 0. So, therefore, the uniqueness is not assured by the uniqueness theorem. Okay, so, uh, given a differential equation, we can make out whether uh, the equation has a unique solution provided uh, the function f is Lipschitz continuous with respect to y. That is one of the sufficient conditions. Again, remember, it is not necessary. There can be a function which does not satisfy Lipschitz continuity, but still thus it can have a unique solution. And uh, we will prove the existence uh, theorem in the coming lectures. So, by uh, various uh, existence theorems we will see. Okay.